Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we will be waiting just some more minutes for some more people to join. So you can take, I guess, three minutes more before the webinar will start. Hello again, everybody. Now, I think we are ready to start. So uh, welcome to all of you to our uh, Grand School webinar related to how to develop your network and your strategy to become a partner in European projects. Uh, I guess that you are all eager for Horizon Europe to start today. So we thought it would be interesting to, to take maybe an in-depth look on how you can get prepared because the European Commission has since some years already developed several interesting tools in relation to open data and stuff. So you can actually find a very interesting information related to former projects and even participants and it can be, could be really useful for you uh, to become potentially a partner in projects. So what we will handle today is mainly three different subjects. Of course, we will make a little reminder of how to develop the partnership strategy and what is really the partnership building and value chains all about. And uh, then the core of the webinar is really how to make use of CORDIS and participant portal to achieve it. And uh, last but not least, also some tips and tricks on how to communicate well on your partnership offer. So for this first part related to partnership strategy, I let the floor to my colleague Miriam. Yes, good afternoon everybody. So uh, partnership is really important in European project. We say that it's 50% uh, of, the, of the job. If you have the good value chain, you're already you have already made part of the job for building your, your project. And so to have a complete partnership, you, you have to be aware of what is a value chain. That's why we will take a few minutes to re-explain this or explain this if you don't know this, uh, this film. So uh, European programs aim at technology transfer. So you should really have what we call all the value chain to so all the activities uh, from the beginning to the end. So 
This is to say you have to have your supplier and you have to have technology developer and then integrator and for most of the projects, some users to make the link to market. And this is really important because if you have one hole in your value chain, then you will you might be able to demonstrate something, but you cannot prove the commission that you have all the partners and all the entities who will be willing to use it in real life. So this is uh, this is really important. And we, we had a lot of projects in uh, FP7 that were not funded. For example, in Horizon 2020, this is a major shortcoming. Most of the time, uh, partners like uh, lack developers, technology developers. This means that you have you have the laboratories that will develop the technologies, but at low TRL, at low scale. And then you have somebody who will be who is willing to use it, but you don't have the people who want to commercialize the technology at the end. And so if you miss this, and so you don't have a full value chain, uh, you have almost no chance to be no chance to be funded in a horizon 2020 and now horizon Europe. That's why it is really important to have this in mind. So uh, we put some examples of uh, what is an R&D partnership in the Horizon Europe project. So this might be a bit different for pillar for fundamental project, fundamental research project, and more industrial projects. So for pillar one and pillar three, uh, with the FET open, <laughs> you should involve, you will involve fundamental research, and then you will have applied research and technology integrator, you might not go until the end user. For PyLi2, you might not have fundamental research, but you will have include the stakeholders. But and for most for some projects, you can also have the, the whole really the whole value chain. So what is important is that you you ensure that you have raw material supplier, that you have the people who are able to develop and manufacture the technology, that you have also some technology integrator. This might be for several applications, and then you have several targeted markets. This can be also for scale up and replicability, and then you go to the end users. But this is really important to include all these people and to make sure that you have no hole. So as an example, this is a typical partnership for collaborative project in Horizon 2020. And what will uh, now be Horizon Europe. So you have a supplier, most of the time this is an industrial entity, so this can be an SME. Then technology provider might be RTO and with a scientific skills board by universities and RTOs. Uh, the manufacturers and equipment suppliers are industrial entities, can be SMEs. Then you will have an integrator, will be an industrial entity, and also the operator and user at the end is also an industrial entity. Uh, at this, you add, of course, uh, some uh, impact assessment and so performance analysis or life cycle analysis, etc. All these aspects. And now you also have social and human uh, sciences analysis, which is most of the time included. And you should have all partners for all of these aspects. Well, uh, regarding this partnership building, what are the methods that we apply at aiming to do this? Of course. Uh, the first step is really related to identifying very precisely what are the missing skills and profiles that you are looking for. So the first issue to analyze above all, obviously, is the is the topic expectations. Uh, I mean, already within Horizon 2020 and also uh, uh, very much now within Horizon Europe, of course, uh, it's very important to have uh, in, in some themes, the multi-actor approach, so to say, so meaning having uh, not only several different applications on a technological point of view, but also related to disciplines and sectors, and also uh, sometimes going until the citizens' involvement and not only social sciences on a research or a, a scientific level, but even going for behavioral change within the citizens, so involving NGOs or or other type of citizens' uh, initiatives. So, so this is really a, a, a very important first point to have a really good view of what they expect and what are, what should be the key components of your product, and thus the key components of the partnership. Um, okay, so once you have this vision, you say, okay, now let's try to transform this into a value chain, as, as uh, Miriam just did. 
you should for sure try to identify what are the skills flow and what are the deliverables around the missing part that you have because obviously within your value chain already you know some of the missing with some of the partners that you could contact but maybe some are really new and you don't have any knowledge on that so you need to precisely define what is the skills and what will this partner deliver to you what what ex expected result do you have do you wish from him his side um, then, of course, defining the keywords that are necessary for this uh, search. Um, keywords can be related to partner type, meaning like, okay, I'm looking for an industry or I'm looking for an RTO, whatever it can be. Sometimes it can even be related to location-wise, saying like, okay, we need to have someone, I don't know, from Central Eastern Europe for whatever reason. So, I mean, you can have very different uh, keywords to precisely uh, go down to the to find the, the the perfect match not only related to the competencies but also other considerations that are important then the second step obviously is how to find this perfect candidate well the tools that we use here at aiming obviously internet that's in many of you sometimes actually we do uh, google and we find well not only we find a good uh, interesting profile and then we look elsewhere and we find in final uh, an interesting person to contact but whatever so internet patent and public publication search of course that is also a very interesting name related to scientific uh, groups working on very uh, precise subjects publications of course the personal network obviously and that is not only related to you but also to you and your partners uh, again, Cordis, as we say, and we will be going into that details late, later on, is also a very interesting uh, uh, means to, to find interesting partners. Uh, in some cases, you can even have regional supports with Enterprise Europe, and I think we will be briefly discuss that also. And obviously events, you know, the European Commission organized very free frequently the events for different calls and in some at least in horizon 2020 you have brokerage so you could actually uh, set up meeting to team up with people uh, they have also tried this on distance which is kind of okay it's not the worst case but of course physical events are for sure the best ones uh how to uh how to approach someone that i don't know at all okay this is <laughs> maybe might seem a, a bit curious for you but well some things are obviously obvious, but I mean, you above all need to be prepared and collect information regarding what this person or whatever this entity has done before and could be relevant relevant for your product. Like actually, why do you contact him and why is he is interesting for you? Uh, of course, as we said, physical meeting within events is a great opportunity. Worst case, of course, on distance. Uh, phone, of course, I mean, if it's not really possible to meet up. Uh, mail, obviously, it's kind of difficult. You know, we, we all know how we all work. <laughs> Sometimes we don't see, we think, well, I receive a mail from someone that I don't know, and it, the, 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 just the object seems curious, I, I won't open it up. So it's, it's not the, for sure the best way to communicate and to get in touch. So once you have already clearly identified or get in contact with them, how, how, what, what shall I tell them? Of course, uh, clearly state the added value that uh, this partner could bring to your project. I mean, of course, this seems uh, a bit funny for you, but still you, you need him. He actually at this stage doesn't need you. So you need to be very precise with that. Uh, also highlight how uh, your consortium as a whole uh, could help the partner to go even further in this area. So not only what he could bring to uh, to the value to the product, but also how how the, your you and your partner could bring value to him. And uh, but I mean, of course, this is very uh, top down, saying like you will be saying blah 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 blah, and I want you and blah 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 blah. Okay, but don't forget that also listen to what he says. <laughs> so the partners let him also speak. So ask him questions, what do you think about it, and, and really give him a chance also to maybe express more in detail what what he expects from you and so on. Because sometimes uh, when you have these exchanges, you actually find novel ideas and uh, things to add to your proposal. I mean that is the a collective intelligence that we call here in at aiming good so next um, aspect um what about the tools the tools 
I mean, we, we there are some that are, of course, you need to pay to have. Expernova, for instance, that is a Questrel uh, group um, tool. However, it's very interesting if you want to have true experts. So it's an expert database related to academia. Of course, you have Elsevier, PubMed, and and uh, um, and Scopus, of course. So uh, this. Uh, again, it's also something that you need to pay for a part of them, but I guess as academia, you already have it. Uh, for RTO, well, you can have a look on Google Patents and also again, Orbit Intelligence, of course, they also have very interesting patent databases. And of course, uh, one mustn't neglect the social networks, LinkedIn or ResearchGate are also good tools to get in touch with people. So let's get into how you can make use of Cordis and participant portal, Miriam. Yes, so now we go to the to the core subject. Uh, what are the tools and methods you can use to identify partners and or consortia? So you can capitalize on the, there are three main ways, I would say. So first way is to capitalize on the history of other former projects. So Horizon 2020, also former framework programs, even if now it is a, can be seem a seem bit old, but uh, this, uh, this are uh, my nice, uh, this activity to do. Also, analyze the project funded on similar topics and subjects uh, compared to what you want to do to make sure that this has not been done and to see who has been involved and uh, who you can uh, with which task in order that you can contact them and uh, get in touch. And the last one is to identify key partners so to complete your value chain and gain invisibility. So, as we said, you need to have the whole value chain. So, you need to think, uh, I need this, these people, I want people to do this, want people to do this. From my side, I can do this. And then to build this value chain and the tool we will, uh, we will show can help you to find uh, the right partners for, for filling in the value chain. And this is always good to have partners that are already part of some funded project because then they know what is being part of a collaborative funding project. And then the Europe also knows that uh, this is interesting to have them and that they are good partners. So we will now go directly. Okay, so then uh, you will have the slides, of course, with the link, and we forgot to tell you that, of course, if you have questions, you can use the chat at any time. Uh, so on the Cordis, you see, you can have you can have the full list of projects uh, by framework program, which is really interesting. You can also download this as a all Horizon 2020 funded project and all FP7 project as an Excel file. So these are many information. They are the time of data mining. So, yeah, but you can have large amount of information, which is really interesting. But uh, need a bit of time if you want to find the right partner. Just downloading the Excel file. You can also uh, you have some interactive uh, data tool. So you can also use this. Uh, what we wanted to show you is that you can, for example, if you are working on additive manufacturing, you can just type your subject and then you can search project and results in your subject. So what is interesting is that you can also, um, you can put some filters, some filters, so you can just search for project, for example, because then you, you will have less, uh, less results and then if you want only other than 2020 and not uh, fp4 and <laughs> because you see you can you can go for a long time and then you can just apply the search and so we are still more than 400 but then uh, you have the the results of so the project in other than 2020 on additive manufacturing and then you can also put of course over keywords if you want to make some more precise and have less results and then you have the information you see all the on each project and you can go on the project for example we'll go on the, the first one and then you have many information you have the the start date and the end date the overall budget eu contribution and you have the coordinator the summary also which program uh, what are the partners so here you, on, you only have one coordinator and one partner but you can have a, you will have all the partner lists if there are more than that you can directly contact the organization 
So by uh, and then you can send an email in order to contact the organization. I think that uh, portal will ask you to connect to your ECAS profile yes, to do you that. Should be login. Yeah. So exactly so that they know where it comes from. And uh, when you click on it, um, I, I'm not I'm not sure that we are connected there, are no. we? No. I know. But when when you click on it, actually, I think you just have the um you have the option to either contact the leader or the project in charge uh, the person in charge of the project so i think it's it's, it's quite interesting actually uh, you won't see his name obviously it will be an an email coming through the platform going into the email of the uh, of the person uh yeah sorry it's it's a bit difficult to go further uh, because then we need to write something down here. But in any case, so uh, you can actually, as, as you said again, you will not have the person, his name, but he will for sure be receiving something in his email as a project responsible. And you can also do that, I think, for the participant. If we expand, you can also have the same thing, contact the organization. Yes, you can visit the website and you can contact. Uh, exactly. Directly. So that, that is the same. So, so that is uh, something um a bit new so to say that you could use it for these purposes yes now you can also download the information exactly is, that was another information that we didn't say before if you go up maybe uh, quickly miriam to the results of the project search actually uh well if we oh, yeah go back so you can actually i mean if if this is something interesting for you for instance you could um put these in what they say uh, a booklet so uh sorry i just need to move our exactly add to my booklet you see it here, here on the screen so you can uh, you can click on that and when you ask for the booklet uh, sorry my booklet up here you click and then you see here clearly all the projects that you have been um, adding to a booklet and you can download it as a pdf file and there you have in fact the same information that you had on the on your uh, on the detailed uh, um, page of the project so, so this uh, this is for sure something that is very interesting and if we go to back to the presentation here so this was really how you can look for projects and and the, in that also sounds fine uh, participants obviously the european commission has also developed uh, well they have an access as through the partner search tool obviously it's the same database behind it's just different ways of going playing with the database obviously but this is if you click on this uh, link here you will get into the partner search so we could actually uh, Tick a key keyword. So if we say, okay, I want to check what Arkema has been doing in the framework program. So you tick Arkema, which is a French chemistry company for those who don't know of it. We search partners, and here we see that no record is found. <laughs> this is not normal. Sorry, I was stupid. It was that you need to put it in the organization name, obviously. It was not the keyword as such. So let's go again. Let's try. So Arkema, they have eight different entities that have more or less participated. As you see, when it's validated, it means that it has been participating in projects. And see here, the Arkema in Cologne, they have 60 projects ongoing. So you can click on this again. And here you will actually see the list of the projects in which they will, you have some statistics, which is more or less interesting for you maybe, but at least you have the list of all the projects with, in which they have been involved. And again, if you click on this, for instance, a recent text project, which is a very interesting project in textile uh, that Aiming was involved in, actually. It was just a, a nice surprise that we got into that project, but whatever. So this recent text project you have, you see, it's the same interface as we had on the project search phase, obviously. And again, you can uh, get clearly in contact with the person at Arkema who was involved in this project through clicking on this button here. So, uh, well, uh, so you, you, you see, uh, maybe some of you were already aware of all this, but uh, it's really uh, some uh, tools that are the more and more uh, utilized and interesting. Uh, okay, so here we just showed again, you can, as we said, have like statistics. Oh, if, is, if that is for any reason interesting for you, well, I guess if you are interested to see maybe how your, 
key competitor or whatever is participating in European products and want to have a look on what they are doing and so on, it can actually be provide you very interesting in information as well. But that is uh, another part of the story. You can also put a partner expertise offer. Maybe Miriam, yeah. you can talk about that quickly. Yes, if you go directly on the topic, uh, you you need to be logged in. If you you can see the searches without being lo logged in, but you you have to be logged if you want to to put yourself to propose your expertise. I would say. Uh, so if we go, uh, for example, on one. Uh, there are not many topics. No, so. there, <laughs> yes, there are not many so, topics, but we will go. They will all be close. For example, we will go to the to a green deal topic. So they are closed, but uh, we can still uh, can still see the partner search. I think. No, can't. Oh, no. Maybe this is because the topic is yeah. closed. Yes, but Sadly when enough, the yeah. when the topic is is active, you can you can see the partner search, and so you can see uh, as you oh, sorry maybe we can yeah. as you see on the screen on the slide, you can see uh, what expertise. So you see the the company, the organization name. They put uh, some uh, details about their expertise, uh, also the date in order that you know if they put this uh, two days ago or two months ago. And then you see the type, you see the, the country, and if they offer or if, if they request. And then you can uh, you can contact them directly. And you can, from your, from your side, you can publish a new, a new partner search, and then you put add, and uh, you might be contacted if uh, your expertise is interesting. This is not the most efficient way. I would say yeah. so, but this is a way and uh, this is a uh, this can be of interest I, I think for some kind of partners meaning like maybe smaller companies uh, this could actually be very useful because I mean even we uh, when we are looking for partners sometimes on subtopics we do have a look on this listing so so uh, SMEs obviously are often uh, profiles that could be interesting for for our project so uh, in that sense. But again, also, if you are a coordinator of a project and you also are looking for someone, sometimes you might maybe find interesting proposals within this uh, partner search look. So don't hesitate to have a look on it on your specific topic that you are targeting. Yes. So, yeah, now we will go to the last part, which is uh, how to communicate well on your offer. So again, uh, well, I mean, if you want to prepare a bit the checklist, of course, you need to know what are your actual skills and what could you be your added value for European partnership. Uh, also be aware of the different uh, funding tools, obviously, uh, and also have a clear look on what are the projects and actors that are uh, has received funding in the area of, of uh, your work. Uh, also use your own network and also participate actively at national and international events, obviously. And also you need to be ready to make compromises sometimes, obviously. I mean, the, maybe it's not always exactly what you imagine, the, the, the project in, in question, but uh, uh, it, it might be a bit remodeled and so on. I mean, it's a collaborative approach, so obviously you need to adapt a bit to each other. but. Um, there are for sure interesting projects in any case, even though it might be not be exactly the ideal for you, but some really interesting in, in any case. So uh, regarding the information brokerage events, of course, as we just named before, there are in general numerous info days and brokerage events that are organized within the call specific uh, areas. Um, and um, it's not always easy to have a, a clear overview what are the different events that are being organized. We have been looking on that aspect actually to see if the European Commission has a common space where they even member states uh, communicate on what they organize, but that is sadly not, not the case. I must say that the French national contact points and the French government website for uh, the European program, they are really, uh, good at uh, collecting on one single page upcoming events. So for those who are French speaking, you can always have a look 
on this website. I, I think we forgot to update it, sadly enough. We will do it in Horizon 2020. We'll put the correct uh, um, uh, link to the new web page for mm -hmm. Horizon Europe. But I, I'm not sure maybe that they have the event section yet, but it will okay. be coming, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, well, in any case, uh, but so whether you are from France or whatever country you are from, do have a look on the national contact uh, uh, websites to have a better view of events organized within your country and also uh, outside of the uh, of your country because uh, these events are sometimes really organized by uh, more federations industrial federations or technology platforms or whatever it can be and in some cases it's the ncps the ministries and so on and sometimes it's co uh, developed with the with europe uh, I see that maybe we have some person who wants to ask a question, so don't has, hesitate to use the, the chat room to ask your question because sadly enough we cannot activate the microphone. So don't hesitate if you have a question uh, to, to put it in the chat box. Okay, now uh, when you, if you by any chance are in, um, are um, able to find an interesting event, uh, you can, we for sure do uh, ask you to uh, register early and create your profile because, I mean, if it's a really a brokerage event, it's really important for you to uh, early uh, propose what you're, uh, what you're interested in and what you can do it in order to be uh, settling a maximum of uh, meetings. Because one must say, I mean, if you, you are a more a researcher and you are interested in meeting industrial uh, partners for instance we know by experience that those kind of partners and participants are very much uh, contacted during events like that so if you want to have a chance to have a talk with the, this and this and this in, uh, company do it early because quite often it can be ooh, uh, completely full and it's a bit uh, sad in that case and uh, last but not least uh well as i said uh, organize your meetings well before closure because uh, it's often a bit first served that is the case so then uh, you have to valorize your skills so you have to to know your added value and to identify it in order that you can tell it clearly to the people you are you want to get in touch with so if you identify somebody then uh, you should uh, take some time to have a look at his expertise and uh, identify how you could work together and be able to explain clearly what you could bring. Because you will, if you want to work together, then this will be this should be a win-win, and the people should be interested of what you have to offer as much as you are interested in what he has to offer. So to communicate these skills, you can do it uh, directly via p2p so partner to partner you can target a key partner via the cordis tool you identify who you want to work with so former participants or coordinator of uh, a former project and then you should identify the complementarity and approach him as we say physical meeting is the best but uh, we all know that uh, in these days this is not uh, so easy to have physical meetings with people so form is the plan B and email is the last uh, plan because people receive many emails with demands etc and so most of the time you won't get uh, an answer or it will take some bit of time so so you can also use uh, networks so um, social networks it might work this uh, this is interesting to to use this tool now we yes we get in touch with quite some partners via LinkedIn or if you identify the right people and you are able to describe your added value in a few words and to interest them, this can be this can be good. And we did this, we integrate uh, people in, in consortia in winning projects with these tools. So of course you also have to look into your networks and maybe in the networks of your friends because uh, the friend of your friend is your friend. So this is a uh, this is uh, important because this is always easy to easier to get in touch with somebody you know or if you know somebody that knows him this uh, this makes him think uh, easier I would say. 
Okay, and then uh, if we have a look a bit of networks, we wanted to briefly present also Enterprise Europe Network, which is uh, a very interesting uh, a database of potential partners. I mean, they are localized in several, uh, almost all member states, I think, and they are very well connected to the uh, the Chamber of Commerce and so on, or industry in the different um, in the different um, member states. Uh, I think just if we want to recommend something to you, uh, it's very important to do it early because it can sometimes take a little bit of time. So uh, this is something that you cannot, it's not advisable to do it like one month before the project is due because it will be not enough time. So it's really something that you should prepare maximum well before, but it could really give you, again, interesting uh, contacts with SMEs, for instance, and also industry on very specific subjects. So it's something that uh, we clearly recommend to you if you have time well before to work on that but again i think what is really important also maybe if you have a very specific location where you want your partner to be you know so that you contact specifically this member state or whatever or this area or whatever it is but so uh that is an interesting uh, feature and then we there are also other european networks we mentioned here some of them but obviously the, the, also some of them are are, uh, you need to pay to access and to be part of them. But um, this is, um, you have Crowd Helix, you have also Kick, uh, the thematic associations, whatever it is. Uh, the it, What is interesting is that you have a, a, a big number of various profiles, universities, RTOs, also in some sense in industries, but it can be sometimes a bit difficult to differentiate from existing profiles. So meaning if you, if they organize brokerage event or whatever it can be, sometimes it's always a bit the same people who are there and maybe it will not access too much outside of your specific scope, but whatever it is, it's something that could be sometimes uh, in, be interesting to consider. Uh, one important network is, uh, as we already mentioned, the National Contact Point Network. So you can on a on the, fund, the funding and tenders portal, you can find the national contact, contact point for your country. And so this is interesting because they, they should answer, they have to, uh, let's say, some overview about uh, what the topics are, etc. They have some unofficial, I would say, information, which is really important. And as one of their purposes is to have people from their country, more people of their country to participate in the project, in the program, so uh, they will give you interesting information. This is uh, on the expectations. They do info days. They are they are rather active. So this is really interesting when you want to go to Horizon Europe or to set up a project. This is really interesting to get in touch with your national contact points. Uh, so the drawback is that they are highly demanding and well occupied. But, but most of the time, they find time for everybody who wants to to be in. So. Good. So contact him, do not hesitate. So this was what we wanted to share to you, with you this early afternoon regarding how to find your perfect match and also how to uh, get prepared for the Horizon Europe. Uh, I see that we have a very interesting question here uh, from one uh, participant. How to select the best project when you're approached by different networks and contacts? That is indeed uh, very interesting because often when you're contacted in the beginning, you do not actually know which project is the winning one. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, what, what uh, and, and again, it also depends on the specific situation. I mean, sometimes also we have partners that are very much contacted on a specific uh, topic and they know very well that the European Commission will only find, fund one product and they ask us, shall we really go for several projects or just focus on one? So um, in order not only to be making competition to yourself, but also maybe to for ethical reasons, whatever it is. So, I mean, obviously, uh, what is to our experience, experience important is really to communicate and discuss with these people. So meaning, if you are approached uh, from one coordinator, do get in touch with him, clearly ask questions, try to understand what, where they are situated. 
also maybe say like okay um, would it be possible that we participate during a core partner meeting because that's not only the the, the the coordinator is leading the meeting but also core partner in in general so when you are in contact with these core partners you also have a better vision of how solid the product is and how it could actually fit a common interest for both of the parties so so of course obviously communication and rather oral communication in the beginning uh, because one cannot only judge on in writing or whatever it is really to actually see how people are motivated mobilized and so on that is really a clear indicator of will this become a winning project or not and is it worthwhile to give it a chop for instance uh, regarding heading for several projects on one single topic when we know that there are only one project that might be funded i mean this is something that you should uh, to our experience be a bit um, clear I mean, specifically, if you are involved as a core partner in a project, uh, that is something that should be discussed between you. Okay, if we are approached by other consortiums, what shall we do? Are we are we all okay in being involved in others, or are we supposed to be exclusive, so to say? Those are uh, discussions that should be taken care of and could be, for whatever reason, maybe yes or no in some cases, but it should be clear among your partners you must have a uh, i mean most of you are involved with partners that uh, you are working on with on maybe a, a continuous basis you want to have nice relationship with them you need to have a confidence in each other and really trust so to say so it's you you should speak openly about it and you should not hide it behind the carpet or to our experience so uh, that was a very interesting question thanks for that one and uh, maybe i don't know if we have received any other specific uh, project okay well obviously um, here what shall we do if there are no brokerage events that are organized on a real basis well i mean that is <laughs> the big question that we have within this uh, specific situation of, of uh, uh, lockdowns and so on. Uh, honestly, it, it, there will not be most likely any physical events before maybe autumn 2021. So this means that for the actual start, we will be having to 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 trust on uh, distance meetings and so on, which is obviously uh, not the ideal situation. So I think our recommendation on this side is really don't wait until the brokerage events are there. Do uh, try to analyze how you can be involved in projects before and take contact them with people that are interesting for you uh, more on an individual and personal basis uh, because the, you cannot only uh, take all your chances for the brokerage events because it will maybe be a bit troublesome, I think so. Okay, so that was um, all for today. I hope you uh, found this uh, webinar interesting. The, the, we have registered the webinar, obviously, so it can be accessed through YouTube following for other colleagues if it's worthwhile. So we wish you all a nice Horizon Europe start soon, <laughs> hopefully. We, we have not yet any specific deadline that has been clearly communicated but uh, again european commission is promising to publish first call during end march or april so just stay tuned and cross our fingers thanks a lot have a good day